Hi, I'm Jonathan Metter and we're here in Pico America Service Department and today we're going to show you how easy it is to install interior lights in a Pico American passenger car. Uh, lots of folks have asked about this and it can be a little scary but like many things it's easier if you know how. We've got the instruction sheet here for our 36135 interior lighting kit and that's the one to use. We've got all the parts uh, from that kit laid out here and ready. Uh, we've also got two packs of metal wheels and there are some options here. Uh, the kit comes set up with pickup wipers as you see here, little bronze wipers and those are made to work with our conventional metal wheels. Uh, that's the economy method and that's the 36164 wheels and you can use two packs per car. Uh, that does create quite a bit of drag though with those wipers, uh, all four of them rubbing on the wheels. Uh, so there's a, a better method that costs a little bit more is to use one pack of the regular metal wheels and one pack of our 36167 ball bearing wheel sets which are incredibly free rolling and have the electrical pickups built into them. Um, we use one of each type of wheel on each truck of the car and this gives you great pickup so it's, it, the pickups are spread out so you don't have flickering uh, but is economical as well. Uh, and then you can dispense with the, the pickup wipers. Or you can go the, the really deluxe route and equip all four uh, wheels uh, with the ball bearing wheels. Uh, just kind of maybe overkill, uh, but some folks like to do that. The ball bearing wheels do roll fantastically and each wheel rolls independently so your car will really uh, just sail along. But got your choices. We're going to do the, uh, the economy with one pack of each and we're just going to get started. As we always try to remember, uh, we have a good soft towel as a cushion so that we don't scuff up the car. Uh, we'll put that down on our work surface and put the car on it. And we're going to follow along with the instructions and letter A or the first thing in the instructions is to remove the roof and then eventually to snap out the wheels from the chassis. So we're going to do that. Uh, this is probably the, the trick, one of the trickiest parts of the installation here. Uh, everybody says, how do I get the roof off of this car? Because there's no visible screws. Uh, if you look about two-thirds of the way from the left side of the car as you're looking at the side of the car, one-third of the way from the right, uh, there is a little tab that goes up uh, from the car side into the roof and we're going to press in on the car body at that point uh, just to kind of loosen things up and everybody says, oh I'm going to break the car, I'm worried, I'm, I'm just going to break it and we're just going to get uh, some a finger finger or thumbnail underneath that silver edge of the roof and start pulling up and everybody thinks it's going to break but have no fear uh, it's incredibly tough plastic and I've never talked to anybody who's broken one uh, the little tab there you see inside the car uh, is now loose on that side and we do the same thing on the other other side and then our car roof will be off all right we have the roof off the car and we're going to move along to step B uh, as in, in the instructions and work on putting the lighting in the roof so we're going to set the car body aside for a little bit and work on the roof. There are two little wires that are gray colored and they have uh, little brass colored pins on one end. Those are for the, the upper roof part and then there are two that are white with the pins on them. It uh, doesn't really matter terribly uh, which side of the car you put gray or white on but the important thing is that you have both the white ones on one side and both the gray ones on one side of the car and those are going to connect into our circuit board and our circuit board has little push-on connectors and we're going to put those little pins on there and you'll notice on the markings little markings on the circuit board it says digital track right or analog track right whether you're using analog DC power or digital DCC power, uh, use the analog terminals, which are the inner pair of, of push-in terminals of the four. Uh, the only reason you'd use the digital terminals, the outer ones, is if you're actually installing a decoder in that car so that you can turn the lights on and off on that individual car uh, through your digital system. But uh, most people even using digital would just, just install the lights and have them on whenever the track is powered on. So we're going to slide that little connector into place and we'll do that for all four of those. You may find a little pair of uh, needle nose pliers handy to help you getting those wires onto the pins. 
And the lower roof section with the letter boards is a separate part from the upper main roof uh, that you see from the top. And there are six screws here uh, that hold the roof on. So we're going to use our Pico screwdriver just to get the last one out of there. Our Phillips screwdriver works great for that. And we'll notice our lighting unit fits uh, in its place in the roof. And the wires get routed through little holes in each corner of the lower roof piece. Uh, just thread those through there. There's space for the wires to extend through uh, between the two pieces of the roof uh, to the circuit board nicely. And this gets the wires routed uh, nicely into the corners of the car uh, so they're mostly out of the way inside the car. And we'll use the two small screws that are in the uh, lighting kit to secure the circuit board. Make sure that you have the side of the circuit board uh, with the five little LEDs facing towards the interior of the car, not facing towards the roof. Uh, so if you can see those terminals where you hooked up the, the wires to the circuit board, you're looking at the wrong side. Uh, make sure that you have it facing the right way. And we'll put those screws in place and put the other wires in place and then we're done with the roof. We finished with the roof and we put that aside for the time and we're back with the car body. We've got the car turned upside down here and the instructions don't specifically say it but I'd suggest that you remove uh, the, both the trucks from the car and actually the in platforms. So there's a little screw that holds each truck in the center and a little washer and the screws that hold the platforms. You're going to want that uh, removed so you can get a good grip on the car chassis in just a moment. And there are three screws that hold the chassis to the car body, one near each truck bolster and on the coaches except the baggage car uh, there's a screw also in the, near the center. Uh, baggage has an open door where you'd see the screw so it doesn't have one. So we're going to remove those and then we'll be ready to remove the chassis from the car body. And the part that always seems to stump everybody uh, is getting this little tab at the end of the car body loose from the, the slot in the chassis. We're going to push on the end of the car body as well as that little tab while pushing the chassis towards it. And you'll think you're going to break it but it will snap loose and then that makes it much easier to get the other end of the car loose. Uh, first time you've tried one it will be tough but keep pulling you won't, you won't break the part. Don't worry about that. Okay we set the car body aside and now we're going to work on the trucks. We're going to gently pry out the truck side frames to snap those original plastic wheels loose. And on the uh, outer end of each truck we're going to put a ball bearing wheel and on the inner uh, and we're going to put a conventional metal wheel since we're doing the economy but uh, nice working method. Uh, those just snap into place. Alright, uh, we're going to install our wires now to the ball bearing wheel set. We're going to use our small flat blade screwdriver and loosen the little uh, screw on each side of the ball bearing wheel. And one thing we want to be sure to do while we have the screw out of that is not uh, allow that to the uh, ball bearing assembly to turn. Uh, it will be a little difficult to get the screw back in there if you do that. So just be careful with that. And again it doesn't matter uh, really so much which side is gray or which side is white as long as we get both trucks on both ends of the car uh, with gray on the same side and white on the, the same side. And there's a little slot molded into the truck bolster there. We're going to feed the wires through there. And then next we're going to feed them through the slot that matches up, that's mounted into the, molded into the chassis. And after that, I'm going to pull the wires down and mount the truck back onto the ch chassis. 
And we're going to be sure we leave a little bit of uh, slack in those wires. Uh, don't pull them too tightly. We want to leave a little room for it to swivel. Uh, and also an important thing is we want to have as much uh, wire on the top side as possible. That will make assembly easier later. Uh, and then on the top side of the chassis, I like to put a couple little bits of uh, electrical tape or scotch tape to uh, route those wires neatly and keep them in the little channels that are molded into the chassis and route the wires all the way out to uh, near the corners of the car. And now we have the car body back uh, upside down and we're holding the chassis over it and we're feeding the wires up from the chassis through the little hole in the car body. Uh, this is just just barely enough room for the wires to fit through those little holes in the corners. Uh, so just be patient with that and route those in place. And you see now why we were taping the, the wires into the corners. And we've made sure that we get the uh, car body and the chassis back together the same way with the hole uh, for the screws lining up properly. And it's all ready to go back together. And we made sure that all the wires were carefully tucked in there. Nothing was getting pinched between the chassis and the car body. And we're putting back the three screws that hold the chassis to the car body securely. So everything is back together on the bottom side and good to go there. All right. Now we have our wires ready coming up from the corners of the car and those are ready to connect into the roof. All right, we're plugging in the last of our wires, connecting the uh, lower part of the car to the roof, and then we will just very carefully make sure that all the wires are tucked into place and that nothing is getting pinched between the parts as we put the car back together. And before we fasten anything on there, uh, we're just gonna put our car on the track and give it a little test so that we don't have to, uh, if something's wrong, we don't have to take the car, car apart completely again. And you can see that we've got very nice light and everything's working fine. So we're going to go ahead and finish up assembly of the car and make sure those wires are tucked in properly. All right, we got the roof back on. We checked for wires uh, pinched anywhere and we kind of give this uh, roof a snap to get it back on there and put our car on the track and test it out and we've got a beautifully lit passenger car ready for a, a nice evening on your garden railroad <laughs>